we're gonna start off with a little bit of hero there's a reason why Bean loves Mariah in fact his bedroom walls are all decked out lots of these posters he loves Mariah Mariah Carey's Bean's favorite he loves her loves her loves her Okay, so our first example, we're, we are focusing on the area of triangles, and before we actually read that example, let's go back to our memory bank and pull out, what do we have? One half base times height. That's what the formula was that your fifth grade teacher gave you, or fourth grade, remember how to find the area of a triangle way back then? All right, so the side lengths of a triangle traffic sign are approximately 27, 27, and we don't know. The angle between the given legs is 40 degrees. Approximate the area of the sign. All right. We can do that. Round your answer to the nearest whole centimeter squared. So let's draw. This is kind of isosceles, I bet you, because it says 27, 27, and then something else, which we don't know. So let's draw a general triangle here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an investigation, kind of similar to the one we did with the law of signs, where I'm going to drop down a height. All right, now let's try to figure this out. Remember that... To use this formula, area equals one-half base times height, we need to know the height of the triangle, but we don't always know the height of the triangle, so we can calculate it. Okay, Remember, how did we calculate the height of the triangle? Well, we used angle C, All right, so the sine of angle C was opposite over adjacent. Now, I'm going to call this side little b, what do you have, little a, little c. All right, so it would be h over b, that's the sine of C. Everybody agree? Okay, I didn't hear anybody oppose, so let's keep going. We're going to cross multiply. H is going to equal B times the sine of C. This works for every triangle, right? All right, so now we're going to go back up to our formula right here. I'm going to go back. Let's go red. So H equals 1 half base times height. Remember, that's the base of the triangle. What's the base of our triangle here? It's A. All right, so the area is going to equal one half the base is actually a and then the height of the triangle is b times the sine of c hey look what we just did we created a brand new formula that can find the area of any triangle and you know what it can be uh, transposed to the other sides meaning if i find you know depending on the information they give you if i find a and c okay that angle right there just has to be the one that's not one of the side lengths given so that would be the sign of B in this situation. Okay, or maybe I didn't have that. Maybe I had one half. They gave you B and C. We would need to know the sign of A. All right, and then we can find the area of a triangle. Oh, that works really nice. The only problem is we don't have that side length. So we're going to have to go back to our law of cosines, which I know you guys love really well. But let's actually put some numbers on this. Uh, they said these sides here, we know it's isosceles because both of these are 27 centimeters. So 27 here, 27 there. We know that this angle measure is 40. And because it's isosceles, that means that each one of these bases has to be 70 because all three angles have to add up to 180 degrees and base angles have to be congruent. All right, so now what are we going to do? Uh, let's make sure we got everything labeled properly. I'm going to find, let's use the law of cosines to find this opposite side here. So, law of cosines says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of a. So let's plug all those numbers in. Then we figure it all out. We get a squared is 341.1. Don't forget to take square root. We get 18. All right, so we're going to work that out. We get 18.469. All right, so now we're going to use our trusty new formula here. So we have the area equals one-half AB times the sine of C. So the area is going to equal, I'm rewriting it, area equals one-half AB times the sine of C. Okay, see here, 70. So this is all going to equal one-half. A is going to be that last answer we got, 18.469 times B, which would be 27 times the sine of C, and C is 70. This whole answer here, we get the area equal to 200. I get 234. Hold on, let me check it. Let me check it. 0.296. And we're talking 
centimeters. So area, remember, we use square units. And that's how easy that works. Let's go to the next one. We have two of two formulas here that we're going to look at. One of them is the one that I, we just uh, figured out right here. And the other one's called Hero's or Heron's formula, depending. I mean, some people translate this a little differently. I'm going to go with Hero's because then we can insert an awesome Mariah Carey Hero clip into the video. And that's really, that's my motivation for everything we're doing today. Um, but we have to learn about what a se semi-perimeter is here. Okay, what do you think it is? So the semicircle is half a circle. Semi-perimeter is half of the perimeter. Now, the area of a triangle, you know, when is this going to work best? This is going to work best if you have one, two, three sides of the triangle. Say, if you're given side, 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 this is the way to go. All right, if you're not given side, 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 you probably have to use this one, but you might need the law of cosines or law of sines to figure out that other side. Okay, first example, find the area of triangle ABC if... A is 15, B is 18, and the measure of angle C is 100. So I'm going to draw that angle C first. It's a little bit obtuse, just like Mr. Breast. All right, we're going to draw that down there. So this is going to be C. Let's throw an A and a B on here. So side length A is 15. Side length B is 18. Uh, side length C is, we don't know, but we would have to use the law of cosines, something like that you know, to figure that all out, but we don't have to do that because we know that the area of a triangle, we just figured this out, is equal to one-half AB times the sine of C. Now, what I always do is I figure out, like, what angle did they give us? They give us C, so I need the other two legs here in front. That makes it easier. So one-half A, we know A is 15. B, we know B is 18. And do we know the sine of 100? I bet it's ugly, but that's okay. So we figure that all out. We're going to get 132. The area is going to equal 132.949. It doesn't say, oh, it does say the units, square feet. Okay, now, remember, that square goes on, it's a unit, it's a square foot. It's like a little tile. But that's it, we're done. That's how you find the area of this triangle. How easy is that? Simple. Let's go to the next example. Find the area of a triangle if A is 20, B is 40, and C is 30. Well, notice this is a little different. This is side, side, side. So let's draw our triangle. It's not so brusque. By that, I mean obtuse. All right, so 20 is A, B is 40, and C is 30. All right, so we're going to use Hero's formula or Heron's formula, uh, which says the area of a triangle is equal to the square root of the semi-perimeter, and then we have to figure out what that is. So it's S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. That's not a 5, not a 5. Uh, let's figure out what S is. F is the semi-perimeter, so it's going to be half of whatever the perimeter is. So we have to do A plus B plus C. So in this case, the semi-perimeter is 30 plus 40 is 70, we get 90 total. Okay, semi-perimeter is going to be 45. So when we figure out what the area is, we have to do the square root. Let's do it over here. Area equals square root of 45 times 45 minus A, which is 20. And then 45 minus B, which is 40 and then 45 minus C, which is 30. Every time we do one of these, square root doesn't go long enough. So that equals the square root of 45 times 25 times 5 times 15. All right, if you work all that out, we're going to end up with a 290.4737. What do we have here? No units. So we're just going to write units squared. That's what the area of this triangle would be. I mean, how simple is that? So you just have to figure out which uh, formula to use. You try the next two. Pause the video. Figure out three and four. Go! Okay, so let's look at the answer number three here. This is uh, Hero's or Heron's formula. If you plug it all in, you get a semi-perimeter of 157.5. That's what S equals. So you plug that in with the three sides, you get 
410.636 square units. They don't give you a unit, so we're just going to say it's a square unit. All right. Okay, number four is a little bit different because what you need to use our formula here, let's pull that out. We're dealing with angles, so we know we're going to be using one half AB sine of C. All right, and C is going to be in between the side lengths A and B, so it's the side angle side. All right, do we have side angle side? No, we have angle side side. That's not good, angle side side. Ain't nobody like that. So what we need to do is we need to find out what this angle is right here so that we can use our uh, formula for the area of a triangle. Now, we can't find that angle because we don't have that side. We first have to find this angle here. So we're going to use the law of sines. Sine of z over z equals sine of y over y. And we're going to find, we know what y is. This is y right here. We're going to find that angle. So here's the work for it. You get y equals 32.169 degrees. Uh, because all the angles then add up to 180, we can find out what Z is. And once we know Z, sorry, that's not Z, that's X. Once we know X, then we can use our formula. Okay. All right, so change that there. X equals 20.83. Now we can use, here we do, two sides in the angle that's included within it. So we can put 6, 9, and then the sine of 20.8. We get the area there to be 9.6. We are done with those two. Try it on your own problems. The last one is like an application problem. Application problem. We have a parallelogram. Let's draw a parallelogram. I like to draw two parallel lines. Eek. And then we draw the uh, the opposite sides there. It says the adjacent sides measure 8 and 12. All right, so let's make this the 12, and we'll make this the 8. Not to scale, right? So one angle between them measures 60 degrees. It has to be this angle here because that's the acute angle. Um, depending on how you draw the parallelogram might be a different place. All right, find the area of the parallelogram. Look, this is so simple because what we can do is we can create two congruent triangles. Uh, look at that. And if I do that, what do we have? Well, this would be 8, this would be 12, this would also be 60. So I can find the area of triangle 1 and triangle 2, uh, but they're going to be the same. So just find the area of triangle 1. And then you can multiply by 2. Okay, so the area is going to equal 1 half AB times the sine of C. Here's our triangle. Now this will be C. We'll do A and B. All right, throw a D down there. So what do we get? 1 half A would be 12. 1 half times 12 times 8 times the sine of 60. Do you know what the sine of 60 is? Should we get all radical? I know. What do we got? Half of, let's actually figure this out. So half of 12 is 6. 6 times 8 is 48. The sine of 60, I know you guys have done this already, but that's radical 3 over 2, right? Now you can use a decimal if you want to, but if you don't, you get this awesome answer of 24 radical 3. That would be 1, that would be the area right here. Now, because this, con this triangle is congruent to this triangle, or you can do a whole problem again if you want, we can do times 2. So the area of the parallelogram is... 48, radical 3, and we are done. Hey, that was easy. So you have two formulas, 1 half AB sine of C, and you have Heron's formula or Hero's formula so that we can listen to some more Mariah. Mr. Bean will be happy. This is Mr. Kelly Baum. Remember, it's nice to be important. More important to be done. One more thing. You're going to need a calculator for the application problems. Just giving you a heads up. See you.